Hello and welcome. My name is Kia and I'm coming to you from Sweden in a small village outside of Gothenburg. Uh, this is my channel here on YouTube where I share with you my crafty life and uh, experiences. Uh, I'm a knitter and a spinner and uh, sometimes other crafts as well. Uh, you can find me on social medias as kiasbod underscore podcast and uh, that's on Instagram and Ravelry and also I have a website kiasbod.se uh, I will put up this video with links to everything I talk about today. If there's a pattern or a yarn or if there is something you are wondering about. Uh, often I link directly to my Ravelry page because I try to keep... Uh, keep my Ravelry page updated. We have been very very lazy taking photos of the finished object uh, lately. <laughs> For a couple of months I should say. Uh, but we, I, I said to my husband today that we must, uh, today we will just have to do it. I will just have to go and do the change and take, take the pictures so we can update the Ravelry page. Uh, but I have the yarn, I have the needle size, I have the amount of yarn I have used and so on. So I will link to my Ravelry page and you can find the yarns and so on there. But yes, under this video there will be links over to my website, to my Patreon and to my coffee account if you want to support my work with this channel. And I'm so grateful for those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and also on Ko-Fi. That's really encouraging, I must say. And I try to do things back for my Patreons, especially. Uh, the previous thing, the last thing I did was to, to gift 400 grams of hand spun yarn to one of you and uh, I hope that, uh, I hope to see what it will become in the future. That's really nice. And also uh, the previous thing that I did was to record a episode of a Gotland special episode and that was uh, I was talking about all the things that I have been knitting in Gotland yarn and that was uh, exciting. I really really love the Swedish uh, Gotland uh, yarn and to bring out the things that I have been knitting in Gotland yarn and to talk about them again and to feel all the things that's uh, really encouraging to me as well and I hope that my patrons liked, liked the little video as well. Uh, the thing that is coming up next for my Patreon is a pattern and I had the t-shirt on in my previous episode and it's the Cecilia top. Uh, this one was knitted in, uh, in Cecilia. It's a, it's a yarn from Svarta Fåret, a Swedish brand, but it's the same content as uh, Line from Sannes or Bell from Drops. You can, you can use any of those yarns. And I designed this t-shirt for me in the end of the summer. And I wasn't super happy with the color and I wanted to make something uh, a little bit more like me. Uh, so uh, I did write, I did take notes when I was knitting this one uh, for all the details and everything. So uh, I am now re-knitting it and uh, from the notes writing a pattern. So that will come for my Patreons. It's always, all my patterns are free for my patrons and they are there forever and only there. <laughs> so if you become a patron you can uh, take use of all the old patterns that's lying there as well. So yes, this top is now created in wool because this was a spring summer top and now I am making it in wool and it will be my sort of autumn winter version of this one. But I will talk more about it uh, later on. But that's what's coming up on my Patreon site. A, a pattern for this uh, Cecilia top will come before, <laughs> yes, I, I hope really soon because I'm, I'm almost done here as you can see. So I will just have someone read through my notes and uh, the pattern and see if everything is okay. I have some friends that usually helps me. 
they are more experienced knitting from patterns than I am because I mainly just uh, do something. I, I knit from my head. That's the most comforting thing for me. So yes, uh, this is uh, this is uh, the October episode and the postcard for October is finally, finally autumn. The previous one was harvesting uh, vegetables and everything, but now we are out in in uh, in the forest and just enjoying all the beautiful autumn colors. And this is my favorite season and I am so much uh, just enjoying to watch the season change now because the color palette in nature right now is the absolutely best color I must say. And yeah, the, the children they are out in the forest and to pick all the, the leaves in different colors and all the chestnuts and just decorate in, indoors on the tables and yeah, it's amazing. I, I just love it. And the, the mushrooms and everything that is in the forest right now is so fantastic. And just a couple of weeks ago I was taking a swim in the ocean and you can't really imagine that today because it's minus degrees and uh, in in the nights, the last three nights has been minus degrees. And just a couple of weeks ago, I was taking a swim in the in the ocean. So that's that's changing. The weather is changing quickly. And I saw on the news that uh, in uh, in north of Sweden they are expecting a lot of snow in the coming days. So that's also <laughs> a bit strange. Here we have uh, we have still got sunny beautiful days, but they are a bit chilly. We have been starting to uh, to uh, put fire in our uh, stove in the kitchen, so it's so cozy and warm in the mornings when we wake up. So that's that's really also a nice thing for autumn, I must say. The coziness comes with autumn. I hope that you like autumn, not only me. Yeah, now now I hear that they are uh, they are shooting the I don't know do you <coughs> in Sweden the moose hunt uh, starts in the first of October and uh, right now it's going on around here and uh, yesterday when I came home from work I met the the do you say hunter <laughs> they were standing there waiting for the moose to come up and it's always scary the the hunting season when they are out uh, in the forest uh, scaring the moose uh, to move also when you are driving in the roads you must be extra careful because uh, they are on the move. So a couple of days ago there were three, one mother and two children running scarily uh, in the highway down here and we also have the fence on the side so they managed to come out on the road and it was, yeah. That's also autumn for you. We have the hunting season as well and you can't go around as you want in, in the forest because uh, have bright colors on so you, they don't take you as a moose. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a little side story. But yes, autumn is here and I love it. I can't wait for, for uh, this to, to go on over to a little bit more cooler weather. It's strange to go swim in the end of September and enjoy it. It's uh, You can do winter bath, but uh, to enjoy it like 17, 18 degrees in the water, that's that's a lot. I heard now that it, it's dropping under 15, so it's getting colder now and that sounds good. We must follow the follow some kind of rules in nature because this is going crazy it's it's the summer is changing and yeah the weather is changing but yes shall we talk about some crafting i am dressed in autumn mood autumn color uh, i have finished this one uh, since we talked to each other in september this is uh, something i came up with it's knitted in malabrigo dos tierras Och the colorway is piedras. 
I got this on the crafty fair in Gothenburg in, in the end of August and I didn't have anything to knit on and my friend Kerstin she was knitting a shawl in this yarn and I just fell in love because the colors are just too amazing. <laughs> So I got three skeins uh, immediately and I went to buy some needles and I cast it on right away for this cardigan. And uh, I thought it would be a short cardigan and with short sleeves perhaps because three skeins was uh, what I was uh, sort of thinking that I could spend. It's quite expensive yarn I must say. It's around uh, 20 above 20 euros per skein and it's a DK weight so it, it, it gets pricey quite quickly but I, I just fell in love with the colors and I thought that uh, yeah let's let's do this and after some weeks my friend Emma who sells this yarn Garnbyron she asked me have you finished that cardigan yet no I said I haven't well, I have a, a shawl that I have started, but I won't finish it. So you can have that skein as well. So I have now four skeins of this. So I managed to make it a little bit longer and also a little bit longer sleeves. And I actually have some yarn left here. And I am playing with the idea if I should take away the ribbing, knit some more and then add the rib ribbing. But I'm also enjoying it just the way it is because I have a lot of long sleeved uh, woolly garments and this one is a little bit different. It's a little bit shorter than the others. It's uh, shorter sleeves and uh, it feels neat like, like it is. And it's superwash yarn so it's not very hot. So I can wear it indoors with no problems. So I'm also liking it just the way it is, so I maybe will use that yarn for something else. But I will stand up so you can see how this one turned out. Also want to show you the super cute uh, buttons with uh, the birds. But this is uh, how it looks, it's short and uh, yeah. It, the color is, is the main thing of this uh, cardigan, but uh, I didn't do anything special. I did twisted ribbing. I am now loving the lateral braid, so I did lateral braid after the ribbing. Lifted stitches for the raglan. Uh, and uh, doing the same here with lateral braid, twisted ribbing and uh, yeah bind off just a regular bind off so you get that chain need to lift the first one over the second one uh, so so you will get the chain that matches the lateral braid so it's really really nice and I did almost uh, almost the same on the Cecilia top so I'm liking this one I haven't blocked it because it's super wash and I think that the fit is just perfect like it is and I'm not sure why to block superwash yarn. When, when there is a non-superwash yarn, there is a bloom and there is uh, some kind of perhaps uh, attaching a little bit. The yarn is attaching a bit to each other and yeah. But I'm, I, with the superwash yarn, there is no blooming and, and there is only stretching and uh, getting uh, unformly, unformly. Do you call it that? <laughs> So I, I didn't block this one actually. I did put uh, put some wet towels over the ribbing at the front so it would not uh, pull together so it would stretch out like that. But that's the only blocking because I'm afraid that I will uh, ruin the fit. It fits so nicely now so I won't... Uh, I won't ruin that. So it's not blocked and I didn't use the full 400 skeins as you can see. I have some, some left here but I'm not sure. I can use that one for something else. Maybe in a color work uh, something perhaps. So this is the top and I think I called it Little Bird on Ravelry because of the lovely buttons. And uh, I bought the buttons on uh, uh, Tina's Garn, it's called, it's a Swedish um, uh, yarn shop in Örebro when I went to visit my friend last autumn. It's a year ago now. 
time goes so quickly. But I was so happy when I uh, when I remembered these little beautiful uh, birds. So they are now decorating this uh, lovely cardigan. It's not the outdoor cardigan. It's more like an indoor cardigan wearing it. Uh, yeah, but but today I think it was nice. Now the sun is coming as well. It was a little bit chilly when I was recording the Swedish episode be before, but now the sun is coming and that might be a problem. I hope the lighting situation will be okay here, even though it's uh, the sun is up now. So that's what I'm wearing and yes, not full 400 grams and Malabrigo and I have a Ravelry page. I have been adding the needle size and the, the color numbers and everything. We will take photos today, I hope, <laughs> and put them up there as well. So that's the first finished object and the second finished object is something I started a couple of months ago and I showed you the uh, the polo neck. Do you call it that? The turtleneck perhaps. I knitted a big cowl in one skein of Sannes uh, brushed alpaca. And uh, I showed it to you and I was dreaming about the polo sweater uh, and uh, yeah. And actually when I finished off some things, I'm not sure, but I said to myself that let's pick up something that you have started. So I picked up this, uh, this uh, turtleneck. I just knitted this one when I showed it to you <laughs> and I started to, to knit on it and I did saddle shoulders where you add stitches on each side every every round. On raglan you do it every other every second round but when you do the saddle shoulder you do, do it on every round because there is only one uh, line. On raglan you have four lines but uh, on, on saddle there is one on each side, so two. So I decided to uh, follow the ribbing out. So there is two pearls going down on the sleeve just to, to take it from, uh, from the polo and down on, on the sleeves here. And when you come to the, to the place where you want, <laughs> you're happy, you want your shoulder to end there. You stop, stop, stop doing every round. You start to do it only on one side of this marker uh, and not every second, every third, I think, uh, round. But you can find free patterns on saddle shoulders and just use them as a guideline for how to construct this saddle shoulder. Uh, and also... Uh, uh, I did because it was just, uh, it's knitted on 6.5 millimeter needles, it's big needles, it's quite thin yarn, brushed alpaca is not uh, a thick yarn, so there is a lot of um, stretching. If you knit, knit tightly there will be not so much stretching, but if you knit loose gauge the fabric gets uh, loose so it gets stretchy. So I did go in and uh, crochet a line on the inside, just where the neckline uh, is. So it will keep its place <laughs> around my neck, so it won't stretch out and just hang. So that's something that I did just to add some st structure and also keep the shoulder on its place. And it's very long. And it, the sleeves are very long and everything is very long and loose and big and cozy and nice. And uh, we are planning to take pictures today and I'm thinking that it's quite a long, uh, it's going down on my thighs, you call it that lår, thighs. Uh, and I will wear my, uh, my striped, uh, I bought three pairs of striped long stockings uh, for this season. From Gudrun Schöden, she's a Swedish uh, happy uh, uh, clothes designer, and she likes a lot of colors and different uh, patterns. And yeah, so I bought striped in three different colors. So there will be striped long stockings and only this long uh, 
long uh, sweater and uh, yeah, I think that's a, a cozy look for autumn and winter. It's nothing that I will go to the store in, but when I come home with my just to cozy up in a big, a big nice sweater with woolly pants, that's um, that's the look <laughs> that will go with that one. And with this one, I had wide linen pants and just a tank top in under uh, under this. I'm not sure how to to do it for the pictures, but perhaps. We will take this look for this uh, cardigan. I am so behind on taking pictures on a lot of things. The black Ramona cardigan we haven't done and this uh, Cecilia we haven't done and this and yeah. I haven't been in the mood. I'm not feeling it for uh, for uh, the social media thing right now. It's, it's a little bit... Uh, overwhelming I'm, I'm having my new job and I love it and it's taking a lot of energy and somehow I don't have the energy left for social medias right now it will perhaps change but right now I am just keeping a little bit low profile <laughs> but uh, yeah I love to come here once a month for YouTube but um, the 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 before it was always so uh, the sort of doing the ending of a product was taking the pictures and putting them up on uh, on instagram and uh, and uh, that that was sort of closing a circle when you start a project and the ending of that circle was to like, take the pictures and put them up on ravelry and on instagram and that will complete the project but uh, i have lost that uh, last bit uh, lately but it will it will come back i'm sure as soon as i stop to put all my energy on my new job i say that all all the time but i'm not that kind of person who can go to work and do something uh, not 100 percent i do it 110 <laughs> percent of course but yes let's not talk about that hopefully we will do the pictures today and i will be back on track and everything will be fine so that's the finished object and this one and i have seen something else uh, when you scroll on instagram you know if you st stop to look on a picture a little bit longer than the other pictures the the algorithm take it up and they start to feed you with with similar things all the time and something that came up on my uh, on my instagram feed was uh, commercial from sister anna grene i'm not sure if you know what that is i will link to this uh, sock yarn because it was self striping yarn from uh, from this uh, sister anna grene and it came in uh, well i'm not sure i i got two two colors but i'm perhaps there was more i'm not sure now but i got uh, this autumnal lovely colors two skeins 50 gram skeins and i also got uh, this spring like uh, color they are more more like spring i think easter or yeah they look happy so uh, this was a relaxing knit i just casted on 64 stitches on dpns 2.25 and knitted two by two ribbing, reinforced heel, uh, continued with the ribbing on the top of the sock and just doing plain, plain stockinette under. The yarn is not feeling super sturdy, I'm not sure, it, it is with, uh, with uh, what do you call it, polyamid. It includes 25% polyamide, but it feels like, uh, have you knitted with Nordlys? It's also a sock yarn, but it doesn't feel very sturdy. So we, we will see. I, I enjoyed the knit. It was fun. The stripes is, and the colors are making me happy. So it, it doesn't matter if they don't hold up. I also enjoy mending and the look of mended sock is also something that I like. So it doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, 
I, I wanted to try this and uh, it's not very it's not very expensive but it's also not very cheap it's uh, it's in between like uh, 65 euros per 50 gram so it's uh, 135 140 Swedish crowns like 14 euros perhaps so we shall see if they will if they will uh, hold hold or not but yes this pair of sock has uh, come off the needles and they flew by this was the perfect knit for uh, for work to bring uh, to work and then just when I had some time I could pick up a small project and knit the stripes so uh, I'm looking forward to casting on the autumn colors here they will be also really nice but I am uh, I am doing a sample knit for Emma she is uh, starting to dye up sock yarn so I'm, I promise to knit up a pair of socks for her I will show them later but that's the stripes socks are also a finished object and I also have this finished object this one I know I was working on uh, when I talked to you the last time. I can't quite remember how far I was, but I think I, I didn't have much left. And it's the Copenhagen cardigan and it's a free pattern on Svarta Fåret. And I will link to this pattern on Ravelry for you. Uh, it's uh, knitted in Gotland yarn. And I bought the yarn when I went to this uh, fair uh, in Gothenburg in August, end of August, and I sort of cast it on quite quickly. And then we went to Gotland and I knitted a lot on this one on Gotland, the Gotland trip, because there is a lot of going by car. So it, uh, it flew off the needles and uh, the Gotland yarn is my favorite yarn, so it's also, I just love every second of knitting with uh, the Gotland, so it, it wasn't uh, with this one, it was uh, knitted on uh, 6.5 mm needles and my hands got sort of, uh, I got some uh, troubles knitting with 6.5 so I couldn't knit on this one all the time. I had to, uh, to pick it down, put it down and uh, do some other things in between. But with this one, it was just uh, pure joy from beginning to the end. And the fit was magical, and the yarn is magical, and the pattern, I have no complaints of the pattern. It's ribbing in, in the front and the back, and the sleeves are in uh, just stockinette. And the, the, the ribbing is two, two knits and two pearls, and then you move them back and forward, so it creates alpstickning, it's called. It's a little bit, uh, just extra texture of, uh, of ribbing really really nice to knit and to to look at i think it gave nice texture to this cardigan uh, i used 375 grams of gotland uh, lammull lamb's wool gotland from avelsås och inredning and that's a swedish uh, yarn shop and uh, they uh, they create a lot of own uh, patterns and they also collect the uh, fibers and they spin everything is it's a Swedish product 100% so that's really lovely and uh, the designer is Sara Klint she's a Swedish designer and uh, for Svarta Fåret uh, that's the company so it's it's 100% Swedish uh, product I must say I'm also Swedish so the knitter is Swedish the the yarn producer is Swedish and the designer is Swedish so that's really really nice and uh, yeah I'm not sure did you see the pictures on Instagram uh, I can put in some pictures here so you can see uh, how it looks on it got perfect perfect fit I must say <laughs> lovely pictures and Nemo was kind to to keep me entertained while we were taking those photos so that's really really nice 
and I can't wait now to start to use that sweater. And also the blue Gotland, the Esme sweater that I knitted in spring. Now it's time, it's so so time to start to use the lovely woolly sweaters. I did take one day, it was a couple of weeks ago I think. Uh, I decided to pull out all my woolly sweaters and uh, clean out, out the shelf and everything and to uh, air put air through the <laughs> through the sweaters and just to organize them again for for winter and autumn and I got so inspired by doing that it was really nice uh, I used to do that before but uh, I sort of have uh, do you remember I did October Knits a couple of years ago and uh, I brought out uh, sweaters and uh, things that needed to be mended or fixed or something but I, I didn't find any. It's one sweater that I have been knitting that where the yoke is too big but the body and the sleeve is nice so I have put that one uh, I picked it out and I didn't put it back on, on the shelf again because I think I will cut that yoke off and then re-knit it uh, again because I won't use it as it is. I have lost a little bit of weight, I'm not sure. I haven't done anything to, to lose weight but I have lost some weight and it's even more bubbly now on the yoke and it looks not nice at all. So I think I will cut it away, cut it away and re-knit the yoke. It's quite quickly to do so. So it's just the first step to, to decide that now I will do it. I know I was hesitating a little bit when I was knitting that because it was a colorwork yoke and then there were no raglan after the colorwork yoke. It was just knitted straight. So I was thinking that can this work? But it didn't. So I'm disappointed. I might. It was also knitted in my handspun, so I really want it to work. <laughs> so I think I will do some surgery. But I used October for that month for fixing, uh, fixing problems with some sweaters. But I didn't find anything this year. Only this one. So perhaps I will do that in October. That would be nice. So, 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 I think that this is it. So what I am working on now is my second version of the Cecilia top. And I'm so glad I got, uh, got around to start this one because I was, I wanted to knit the second version in a more comfortable color that I prefer than the other one. And I also wanted to rewrite the pattern for my patrons and I wanted to use my hand spun yarn. I did spin 400 grams of this beautiful colorway troll from uh, Gonbyron and uh, it's merino silk so it's so lovely and it will be beautiful. So I have started to knit the sweater and the raglan and I have I have separated here and uh, going down so it will be really nice and uh, I'm loving every minute of seeing this hand spun yarn grow it's really lovely and yeah it's all the details the same as in the the orange Cecilia top so it will be nice. I, I'm happy to have this one going now. It will be it will be nice to have the pattern finished for my patrons, and I think that this will be a lovely autumn uh, autumn top as well. I am planning to make longer sleeves on this one, not a t-shirt, but uh, down to three quarter length or something because I want I want some extra. I wasn't sure about uh, how much yarn I would have. But I have uh, quite a bit left here, and I am almost uh, no, not done. But I have come a far, a far. I have come far on that sweater, and I still have a full 200 grams here, and something here. I'm not sure, 50 grams perhaps. So uh, definitely uh, three quarter length, not t-shirt uh, for this one. I want to use it in the winter, autumn and winter. So I'm looking forward to finish this uh, design as well and write it down as a pattern. That will be very good for, for me and for my patron. It's, it's always nice to 
often I sit down, like with this one. I just cast on and I knit and I come up with ideas and I just do it. And then perhaps in one year I have no idea how, how I did it because I didn't take any notes. So this one just flew off the needles and I have no idea the number of stitches or anything. I just cast it on and yeah, knitted and bind it off. <laughs> so it's good when you get things down as a sort of pattern. It's not a, a full size pattern but it's a recipe and I can figure out something from it. And uh, my patrons are often happy with the patterns because they they can also figure out how to, to continue with that pattern. So this is what I have going on and I am enjoying this knit because right now it's a lot of stocking net and then I have a pattern under the sleeve and stocking net on the back so it's it's keeping me motivated to, to go on and I can also do the relaxing stocking net and it, it's a nice uh, a nice pattern I must say. There is a cable and there is this texture under the sleeve and uh, yeah it's you knit the front and then you do some work and then you knit the back and you do something and every third row you do some cabling so that's also like stripes you keeps you going plus that you can follow the beautiful uh, the beautiful hand spun yarn shifting and that's so so fun I think because when you when you get the wool wheel from the beginning it's nothing like the end product but you can follow the process uh, when you separate the fibers and how you spin it and how you combine it and and ply it and then when you start to knit it it's it's just so much fun to follow the full process and now I, it wasn't so long ago since I spun the yarn, so I can I have it fresh in my mind how how it was in the beginning. But sometimes I spin and then it gets uh, just laying around for years before I get around to to knit something, and then I can't really remember how was it in the beginning. And it's better to spin and to knit quite closely to, to get the full experience and to learn perhaps from when you see the finished product you can understand what you might do different in the separating of the fibers to get the end product perhaps as you want. So it's good, it's really good. So uh, I'm also working on that sample as I said for my friend Emma. She is starting to dye up sock yarn and she has uh, glittery rainbow sock yarn and she asked if I could knit a pair of socks for her to have as a sample and she wanted me to use a pattern for <laughs> for uh, the sock and I sort of got stuck there because uh, yeah me and patterns I used a pattern called socks on a plane and this was included in uh, FreeSock 2020, uh, perhaps you remember FreeSock 2020, that was a lot of fun. Uh, we picked out one free pattern every month from Ravelry and we knitted it and used up yarns from our stash. So Socks on a Plane was uh, somewhere on autumn, was it November, October, November I, I think. <laughs> and it's a toe up sock with one cable here and uh, the second pair will be with the cable on the outside so it will sort of mirror, mirror this sock. But here is the problem. I have no idea when to start uh, for the heel and I was looking for uh, this pair of socks in my drawer but I couldn't find them so if I find that pair I can uh, compare where I started the heel on that pair from this one. But now I have no idea. I have no experience in knitting uh, from toe up and with heels that you knit uh, from toe up so I really must find that pair of socks so I can compare and pass the heel and finish because this one was knitted in sort of two days it's so much fun and now it just stopped because I have no idea how to how to figure out the heel but this this sock yarn will come uh, from uh, in Emma's shop uh, and also other colors, but she wanted the the rainbow, <laughs> the rainbow colors up 
knitted up into a pair of socks. And I will absolutely find that sock and compare and get going with that. So, yes. And after that pair, there will be this self-striping, more autumnal yarn casted on. So that's really nice. Uh, I have been to events, uh, two events since I saw you the last time. And the first event was in uh, Gunnebo slot. It's called, it's a castle here, not between Gothenburg and where I live, there's a castle called Gunnebo slot. And they have had like harvest markets and uh, things like that other years. But this year for the first time they, they had something called food and crafting market. So they com combined the harvesting and the food with all the crafting uh, and it was crafters from a lot of different like wood and uh, fibers and textiles and uh, color, color of textiles like silk and a lot you could can't imagine it was all the things really really lovely and me and my friend Kerstin we went there and we had lunch there and we strolled around and it was a beautiful day like this sunny and really really nice and uh, I didn't buy a lot, but I found uh, a man who was uh, selling uh, handmade wood uh, things. And he had a beautiful bird that was called Comfort Bird. And it was so lovely and soft and the point was to have it in your hand to sort of just rub that uh, soft bird uh, to get comfort. And I also got a bird brush and a leaf brush. And I can put in a picture of the things that I got from him. It was really, really good price, I must say, for, for uh, hand craft. Uh, the second thing that I got was uh, fibers. Uh, there was... Uh, uh, There was a woman, you could also try out different crafts and this this woman, she was, uh, you could try with um, spindle spinning and she also sold uh, small small batches of Helsinge Ull. It's a Swedish uh, breed that is, uh, there is not a lot of this uh, breed left so she is uh, um, how, how do I explain English? <laughs> she is bringing up more sheep on her farm, so to provide the Helsinge Ull. And she had uh, white, uh, she had others as well, but I bought uh, white and grey. And I wanted to spin on my spindle at home and I want to uh, knit a pair of mittens. And this one was from a sheep called Linus, and that's my son's name. <laughs> and this one was from Britta, a sheep called Britta. And the white and the grey, they can make some kind of color work mittens, I think. So when I got home, I started to spin, of course, and I spun up 50 grams of, uh, of Linus, and I winded it off to the Nyste pinne. And I guess... I, the weekend was off or something and I had to go to work and you know how it is, you put it aside and you forget it. So it was quite good that I had to bring it out now for podcasting because I have been so inspired again to, to keep on, continue to spin on this. So uh, yeah, I want to spin the second Linus, the second grey Helsinge Ull, and then ply it with that one, so I have the first skein. It did, I think it, it didn't take a lot of time. One day and I spun up this on a, a spindle, so it got quite quickly. But you know, the, the, the thing that takes the most time is to get going. After that it's just uh, flowing. But yes, that I bought that fiber there and I wanted to knit for a pair of mittens and uh, the wooden things. That's what I bought on uh, that castle. Uh, the other weekend it was Ullik Beek and that's a small, uh, it's, a, it's a farm down here by the coast. 
and once every autumn they have a, a fair with different uh, vendors that comes and sells the things and you can also go and uh, enjoy their sheep and they have uh, their own shop that's always there with a lot of yarns and uh, and uh, fibers and so and uh, we went there last weekend i think it was or the weekend before i'm not sure now but i i wasn't going to to buy anything of course <laughs> but that never holds up so uh, I went uh, down. They also have uh, a market with fleece. Uh, farmers can take, bring the fleece, and they can sell it. And there was an alpaca, alpaca farmer, my son's alpaca, and she was uh, selling uh, alpaca fibers in different uh, shades, of course. But at this time, I fell for the black, the black alpaca. And it wasn't like this, it was in just the, the locks. But as soon as I came home, I brought out my carder and I drum carded it uh, all. It was 400 grams. So I now have it uh, sort of ready to, to spin. And I have also started to spin. Uh, I think I have, I'm on the third bat. Uh, on the on the spinning wheel so it's it's a joy to spin but it, it's so dirty you know when you when I was carding the alpaca 400 grams of the locks when I brought picked the carder away it was a pile of sand or something on the on the table because it's so dirty and I know that you sh shall not uh, clean the alpaca fibers before carding but I don't um, I don't remember where I heard it and why perhaps I think the alpaca has a tendency to go elastic you know aesthetic static it's a lot of electricity in that fiber because it's not fat uh, and I wonder if that is the reason why we don't wash it because <laughs> it's so dirty it was filled with sand and now when I'm spinning it, I'm getting black on my on my hands. So uh, yeah, the yarn will be washed and the finished product will, will be washed and then it will be clean. But it, it's when you handle the unwashed fiber, you get a lot of uh, dirt on your hands. It's not like it's uh, poo or something. It's just some something black. It feels like it could be sand or something that's really, really just black. If you know, comment below and let me know about this alpaca and the static and everything. And why don't we wash the fiber before we card it? I have heard it, but I have forgot it, I must say. But I, I, I remember not to wash it, but I, I'm not sure why. <laughs> so if you know, please comment below and uh, re re. Uh, inform me that would be really nice but I'm, I'm enjoying my spinning and I'm trying not to spin so very thin a little little bit thicker I like it around sport between sport and DK but my previous alpaca was really thin so yeah we shall see it it becomes what it becomes but I am trying to not spin so thin this time that is something that I bought and I also bought a kit from a lovely lady that I got to know a couple of years ago and she had now started a company selling Kromsky wheels and all the things uh, around it like Nidi Noddis and the Lazy Kates and all, all the things that you need for spinning and she raises Angora bunnies and she has now uh, mixing angora with other breeds and creating yarns and now she has put together a kit for a pair of socks and this is with uh, Swedish Klövsjö that's also uh, a Swedish uh, breed and mixing it with angora bunny fibers that will be super soft so as soon as I'm ready with the, the sample knit for Emma I will cast on this pair of uh, cozy socks for me. So this is a kit. It was not very cheap. It was quite expensive. But since I want to 
support her in her business and I want to, yeah, you know, it's it's a Swedish product. It's 100% Swedish and I like it and want to support. So this is what I will be casting on later and I will have link, I, I will try to find her so there will be links to her shop so you can find it. Something else that I got and last year on on uh, this fair that we have here in Gothenburg I got a book with felted uh, uh, squares it what you can do with felted squares lappat it's yeah I'm not sure I got the book and I got um, fabric and I was so <laughs> I was so eager to start to do something but I never got around to doing anything so this time when I saw her I thought that if I buy a kit perhaps I will make something of this and it will be a pillow kudden ruta that's the pillow square it's called and it's all all is uh, cut out all the squares are cut out and everything I need is in this little bag to make this pillow and I really hope that this will make me do it. Uh, besides spinning and knitting I enjoy hand stitching it's really relaxing I think and this one is hand stitched so if I just get around to placing out the squares and just starting to to, to sew together. You sew together two, two of these squares with a stripe of a third fabric uh, between the squares and then when you fold it out you just cut down that stripe so it will just create a, like a black uh, line in between there. So it's, it's not hard, it's just to, to sew together the stripes and then when the stripes are done you just sew together the stripes. So it, it's easy, it's, it's the same with this one, you just have to get started. But two kits and one bag of alpaca fibers was what I got when we went to that fair. So that was really nice. I was pleased. They were both expensive kits, but I think I didn't buy that much. And the alpaca fibers was not expensive at all. So I thought that buy less and pay some money. <laughs> Instead of buying a lot of things uh, with, uh, with smaller money, but you end up with a lot of things that, yeah, you know, better to put extra money on special things. And this, uh, this end of this October I will go to Stockholm because this uh, Sio Handwerksfestivalen that is going on here every, week, every year in Gothenburg. I have never, it, it goes around in Sweden in different towns and I have never went to, to Stockholm to visit that fair. And this year I said to my husband, if you drive me, because I work the night, we have sleeping nights, but not always is... Uh, uh, a good sleeping night so I said that if you drive and I can perhaps rest in the car on Friday we can go for this on the weekend and he has some uh, he's, he's a photographer so he likes to go to uh, museums and galleries and so so he said he can he can enjoy in himself while I go to that Sio uh, Handwerks festivalen so there will be a lot of Swedish podcasters coming to this uh, to this event and uh, I'm so looking forward. All the podcasters that I have been watching lately, the Swedish podcasters, they are going to Stockholm and they are living in the same hotel. Everybody is staying at the same hotel and the vendors are on that hotel and it will be so much fun. So I'm looking forward to the last weekend in October to go to Stockholm. Uh, and I, uh, of course, hope I won't buy too many things, but also if I find special beautiful things, I'm super happy. Both of these were purchases from August and both of them are now done. So that feels really nice. And uh, yeah, if I find special things, I will definitely buy. Uh, but if I don't find that special thing, perhaps I won't. We shall see. I promise nothing, but you will see in, in the next episode if I held back or, or not. <laughs> uh, 
the, the main uh, thing here is not to buy, it's to meet all the beautiful people that are going there. Both, uh, both uh, other podcasters, but also people that are watching the podcast and meet all, all, all the people. It will be really, really lovely. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the last thing that I have here on on in my notebook are things that I, after the previous podcast, I wrote down things that I am eager to cast on. And the first thing I wrote was to knit a cowl from the cards that I was showing you, the cards with different charts. I want to knit a long cowl in Holstgarn and just play around with, with the yarn that I have. Uh, I want to cast on a sweater from Kalevala book, Kalevala boken, and uh, I have, I think, I want a grey one with that okra yellow uh, color work. So that I think I will cast on quite soon, actually. Perhaps it will be my Stockholm knit. Uh, I also wrote that I wanted to cast on this uh, Cecilia top in my handspun and, and I have done that so that's really really good. Uh, I, I uh, had a wish for uh, casting on nightbook, uh, a sweater that's all over color work. I will put in a picture here. Uh, not so eager to do that right now actually but uh, we shall see. There is also an all over Fair Isle tunic that I am so eager to start and perhaps I will do so when I finish off some things here. I will do that. Uh, and the last thing is I have a lot of pre-yarn in a natural white and I was thinking perhaps as a dress. But now that I almost made this one into a dress, I think perhaps I will go for a long cardigan instead and in moss stitch it would be so beautiful so we, we shall see I bought uh, the Titicaca uh, also on on the fair in Gothenburg so if I hold those two together it might create a nice fabric for uh, for a long cardigan hmm. we shall see we shall see. But that is some, uh, some dream knitting that I have going on in my head and we shall see the next time what I have casted on. Uh, and uh, yeah, besides that there is not so much going on actually. After that it will be November and then there is soon Advent and Christmas and time is just flying now. But uh, yeah, if we did take the pictures today, me and my husband, I will end this podcast now with, with some pictures so you can uh, see how, how the garments fit on and how I did <laughs> style them in the end. So I hope that you will enjoy that. And until the next time, uh, I will uh, hope that you also are enjoying uh, autumn and having a lovely time. So, see you in a month. Bye-bye.